I will present the record ca uh, tape case uh, on the next generation uh, cardiac plug, the amulet. Uh, it was uh, actually the first in man uh, that we did last July. And uh, we'll concentrate more on the difference between the, the second generation device and the first generation device. Uh, because we are going to have an, another tape case uh, later today. Uh, just on st to show the step-by-step -step, uh, related to that uh, procedure. So it's a 67-year-old woman with hypertension, diabetes, and aortic valve replacement. It was done in 2011. Um, chronic AF, high risk of stroke, CHAS-3, chads vasc 5 uh, Refer at the time for LA occlusion uh, because the oral anticoagulation was stopped in the context of ma massive recurrent GI bleedings. Uh, this, so this is the... Um, uh, baseline TE, uh, different views as usual. You see uh, there's a lot of uh, spontaneous echo of contrast in the uh, HM. Uh, quite good anatomy for a closure, uh, quite straightforward uh, as you can see. No clear thrombus, but the suspicion of a thrombus at the time. It's why we inject contrast to be sure there was no thrombus and we find no uh, thrombus, no evident thrombus. Uh, uh, as far as we were concerned. Uh, so was, we were in July, uh, was uh, first in man. That device was uh, uh, the second generation of the first one with few, a few key change that I will uh, explain after. So we were in the uh, Ibrun room at the Institute, Montreal Art Institute. The patient was uh, under general anesthesia. TE guidance, guidance, this is the usual way for us. We pre-close typically the vein with a suture. This is the catheter for the transeptal puncture. This is the SL1 uh, catheter by St. Jude. Uh, we like to use this catheter to do a nice uh, uh, posterior and inferior puncture of this atrial septum. Uh, this is the first angiogram, uh, typically for us RAO cranial, with a mark, uh, five French mark pigtail. Uh, so you see very well the proximal portion of the uh, appendage. We were happy with the position of the, the location of the transeptal puncture. And this is now the RAO caudal uh, injection, uh, showing more of the distal part of the appendage. And you can clearly see there's too low, probably, uh, but still a very good anatomy and a good landing zone for a, a device. This is the uh, measurement uh, to try to correlate the echo and the uh, NGO. So at the level of the ostium, it was approximately 20, 22. Uh, there's, uh, as you know, a lot of difference sometimes with uh, different modalities, but in roughly uh, 20, 22. And the landing zone, roughly 20 millimeter. It was measured one centimeter inside. So we decided to go ahead with a 22 millimeter device. Uh, this is the torque view sheet to deliver that device. So you need a 12 French sheet uh, for, for the 22 millimeter uh, amulet. Uh, there's another option, the 14 French sheet for the largest two diameter uh, uh, device, which is the 32 and the 34 millimeter uh, device. So this is the torque view 45, 45 degree. There's two more sheet available, uh, but this is the classic one. Uh, here that we put in place over the wire that was uh, placed in the uh, left atrial appendage. You see, while well, the uh, bio aortic bioprosthetic valve also, we are in the appendage injecting, confirming the good position of the device, uh, the, the sheet. This is the device. I will not spend time uh, showing uh, uh, how we prepare this device because we are going to have that second tape case today. So I will go right away with the uh, deployment. So we introduce the device uh, that we are going to uh, deploy eventually in the, in the, uh, the appendage. So uh, this is the uh, formation of the ball, this on the appendage, then the lobe. And um, the, the thing with this lobe, with this second generation device, the lobe that you are deploying in the, uh, in the appendage, it's, it's larger than the first generation. And there's also more and stiffer barbs around the lobe to increase potentially the stability of this device in the appendage. The only thing, it's because that lobe is bigger, it takes more volume in the appendage. And this is potentially the only limitation that I see uh, of this device is the fact that you need a lot more volume in the appendage to deploy your lobe. 
So you have that bigger lobe uh, with more barbs and stiffer barbs uh, deployed now uh, in the appendage quite distally and you have the opportunity with this second generation device to deploy the device more distal and then you deploy the, the, the disc, the usual uh, fashion. You have the, the delivery cable still in place. Um, there, there's an option with this uh, device now that you can have actually a two wire. The, the cable is formed by two wire, the inner wire, which is very soft, and the second wire over this inner wire, uh, so an outer sleeve that you can retract to see what's going to be the final position of your device after deployment. It's what we are doing at this point. But as, as you can see, we were not happy about the position of the device at this point because the, lo the disc is deployed inside the appendage, but this is very clear. So you have always the possibility, like the first generation device, to recapture and redeploy the uh, disc over the ostium. But if you want to do that, you need to push back the outer sleeve on the inner wire uh, just to be able to retract your, uh, to, and to recapture your device. And the good thing with this second generation device, the, the disc of the uh, occluder is larger than the first generation, so better cover the ostium. And there's also a longer waist between the lobe and the disc. So uh, again, giving you the opportunity to deploy the, the, that device more distal in the appendage, pull uh, back and then deploy the disc over the ostium. Again, uh, uh, the evaluation of the final, the poten potential final result. Uh, again, the outer sleeve is retract, leaving only the inner wire in place. Uh, so we have a very good visualization of the potential final result. And now we were happy because the disc was redeployed, now covering the proximal trabeculation. Um, so we were happy about this final position. And then you just need to, to release at this point. Uh, the other good thing with this device is the fact that the, the proximal uh, disc, the, 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 the screw is invert now. So it's not going outside like the previous one to potentially increase the safety and to, pre to prevent clot formation on the device. Uh, because it was shown that the, with the first generation device, most of the clot they were forming on the pin uh, of the, uh, the disc. So this is a good final result at the ECHO. Again, different view to demonstrate that the device is well in place in the appendage. And still a good result at follow-up. Typically, uh, the TE at follow-up is done at, at three months in our institution. So still very good result, no thrombus, no residual leak uh, around the, the device. So in summary, uh, the AMLET, uh, it's a more simple device. Uh, I did not focus too much on this, but it will be present in the second case uh, because it's coming preload, so it's a clear advantage. Uh, several uh, interesting uh, feature, including larger size uh, device. We have now a 32 and 34 millimeter device to close larger appendage. Longer waist between the disc and the lobe, uh, giving the opportunity to deploy that device more distal in the appendage. Uh, there's also a longer lobe length uh, I'm still um, not convinced that it's a, a true improvement at this point, uh, just because it, 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 it will require more volume of appendage to deploy that lobe. Uh, but I think we, we, should, we should probably uh, have more experience with the device to judge on that. Uh, we'll potentially minimize the adverse effect. We still need to prove that also, but with that, uh, low profile end screw we will potentially pre prevent clot formation at that level. And there's more stabilizing wire and, and stiffer wire around the lobe, again, to uh, decrease the, uh, the embolization rate. Uh, it's approximately 1.5% with the first generation device. So this uh, first and main case, uh, and all the feature of this amulet uh, is described in a paper now that we were able to publish two months ago. So uh, I will uh, certainly suggest you to review that paper and to see all the characteristics of this uh, device. I really want to thank you, the fellow that I was uh, working uh, with at the time also. They did a phenomenal work uh, to help us to 
put everything in place uh, to be able to do that first in men. Uh, Chevy Frexa is now working in Barcelona. Uh, Apostolos was presenting this morning. Uh, he's working now in Greece. And I want to thank you also, my ECHO colleague, that the, I think if you need for this kind of procedure to work as a team, that's, that's, a, that's a secret. Thank you very much.